guys. The next Morning. day, guys. We are we are live. <laughs> day two, live in uh, Ireland, Lewis. We are going to the Guinness brewery station now to see all that great magical stuff, how Guinness is made and the whole process. I've understood that it's a quite of a experience and it's the most popular tour when you come to Ireland. So we're privileged to be partaking in that today. <laughs> And as I saw now because I'm doing this selfie thing, right? I don't even know how to point to where we are. But we are here. Everything is inverted. By the storehouse. Everything is inverted. We are here. <laughs> Four beers, guys. How are you not like dying in the heat? If you look up, you realize you're standing in the world's largest pint shaped glass. So it's the shape of a pint glass, the atrium. It's about 44 meters tall. How many pints would it hold, do you think? 14.3 um, million. Yeah, 14.3 million. So three times the population of Ireland. I take our brewery about four days to brew enough Guinness to fill it. Four days. Four days. So roughly 30% of all Guinness sales are March every year. Why is that? St. Patrick's Day. Oh. St. Patrick's Day is on the 17th of March every single year. So 30% of all Guinness sales are March every year because of that. Okay. Um, so at full capacity, we can use 4.2 million pints of Guinness every single day. But we won't need full capacity all the time. Full capacity in January and February every year in preparation for St. Patrick's Day. Also we have full, full capacity in early November in preparation for Christmas time. Otherwise we're producing somewhere between 3 and 4 million pints of Guinness every single day. Just totally depends on the demand. Okay. Now we do have 15 Guinness breweries around the world. Okay. So it's not just here that produces Guinness. We do produce a lot of Guinness here. This will be the biggest brewer, Guinness brewery in the world in terms of capacity. Okay. What we'll do now is make way into the center. Down here is the most important document in this building. So this is the lease that Arthur Guinness signed on the 31st of December, 1759. And he signed it for a period of 9,000 years. Okay, so we're 260 years to a 9,000 year lease. Okay, we've only just begun. You may recognize one thing on, on, the, on the lease if you're a fan against down here, bottom right hand corner. You probably all seen it before, you might realize you have, but that's our thing. It's it's signature. Signature. Yeah. And it appears in every single bottle and can of Guinness throughout the world. Okay. Every single bottle throughout the world. Okay. So for 260 years we've been brewing here, right up until 1988, this building here we're standing in was used as a fermentation plant. Okay, so this is where yeast was added to the brew, uh, produced alcohol, produced beer. Okay, right up until 1988. So between 1904 and, oh sorry, 1906 and 1988, this is a fermentation plant. And in 2000, we opened up as a visitor attraction, and now we attract about 1.8 million visitors every single year. Every single year. So, it's roughly equates to about 5,000 people a day. So, uh, in the next 9,000 years, this lease needs to be updated, huh? Yeah. Well, I we don't have to worry about that. It's not for another 8,740 years. Yeah. This, this refers to about only about 4.2 acres, about 16,000 square meters. Where the brewery today is about 53 and a half acres, 220,000 square meters. So it's just a small part of the brewery today. Okay. So the rent was 45 pounds a year and 100 pound deposit. Okay. So it's a pretty good deal. 45 pounds. Yeah. That's good. First question, are you hungry? So we take 10% of our barley and we roast it. Just like you roast coffee or cocoa beans. And yep. that's what gives Guinness its color. What color is Guinness? Black. Not black? black no, not dark brown. Kievan. Kievan, isn't it? What color is Guinness? Uh, Guinness is... What color should I put on that? That's almost like a... Dark no. Chocolate. Same color as the Trinidad and Tobago jerseys, football jerseys. Okay. Red. Okay. red. Ruby red, to be more specific. Okay. Yeah. Really? It is. You don't believe me now, when we go up later on to our taste rooms, I'll hold a sample mm. up to light and it'll very clear. Okay. Wow. So 10% is roasted barley, 10% is natural barley, and 80% of our barley would be malted barley. So a typical lager would be 100% malted barley, where Guinness is only 80% malted barley. And what malted barley is very simply, it's just barley that leaves in warm water for about five days. And it grows, it germinates. And the minute it germinates, all the carbohydrates within the grain turns to sugar. 
and that sugar we use to make alcohol. Because Guinness is only 80% malted barley, it means less, less sugar in Guinness and also less calories. So a pint of Guinness has a 196 calories. For a pint of lager, it's like 240 or 250. Guinness is healthier. I wouldn't say healthier, but certainly <laughs> less calorie content. Uh, oh, okay. So there you go, that's our body all grown in Ireland. 100,000 tons every single year. It roughly equates to about 18.5% of all the barley grown in Ireland every year. It's almost one fifth of all the barley grown in Ireland. Do you guys have the, enough to keep up with that demand? Do you get the barley from anywhere else? Um, whenever there's, we have a bad harvest, we'll get some from France. But generally, it's, it's all from Ireland. Yeah. So that's our barley. Then our next ingredient, you see over here, it's our hops. All our hops uh, are important because we just don't have the climate in Ireland to grow hops. They require about 150 days of sunshine every single year to grow. So that's where we can get our hops from elsewhere. Um, we get them from all over the world, mostly from the Yakima Valley in Washington State in the US. But we also get from Germany, Czech Republic, France, Australia, New Zealand. Wow. If, you, if you look closely, see the flower? That's part of the plant that we use. And that's what keeps the beer fresher for long, but also finds that bittersweet taste at the back of your throat. Now, the yeast that we use, we think Arthur Guinness may have used it back in 1759. So it's very important. Okay, now the thing is, we don't know. We think it might be the same strain of yeast. What we do know for sure is we have been using this strain of yeast for over 100 years. So that was the very first time we invited scientists to come in here and look at our brewing process. Okay, we've been using that same strain of yeast ever since. What does it produce alcohol during fermentation? Okay, it also flavors our beer and it also produces carbon dioxide. Okay, then you'll never guess our final ingredient. Water. How did you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, how did you know? <laughs> also, there's a big waterfall. <laughs> yeah, so our final ingredient is water. We use over 8 million liters of water every single day, and it's all coming from the Wicklow Mountains, so they're just to the south of us. The source is only about 44 kilometers south of here. As the same source, Arthur himself got his water supply back in 1759. Okay. And this is really what makes Guinness the beer it is. This is the reason you've heard of Guinness, because our water is just perfect for our type of beer. Okay. And Arthur Guinness brew in here first, he's most used in red ale, so something similar to Smittix, if you're familiar with that. He wasn't having much success. He was getting by, he was surviving, he wasn't growing the way he would like. And he visited London in the late 1780s, he noticed people there would drink a lot of porter, and he decided to brew it here. But in 10 years, he only produced porter here, because the demand for his porter was so high. And he would have put this success down to his skill as a brewer, but the real reason this place became so big was the water was just perfect for that type of beer. Not particularly good for lard, not particularly good for pale ale or red ale or any other, any other type of beer, but it is ideal for porter especially. Because it's quite high in magnesium sulfate, it highlights flavors of our beer, makes our beer taste really good. This is really the success of Guinness. This is why you've heard of Guinness. No, no, no. We soon decided to... No, no, we... so, what, so what are you saying is that that smell that you're getting right now, that's toasted barley getting into the atmosphere. So you roast <laughs> barley just like you roast coffee or cocoa beans. And that's what gives Guinness its color. What color is Guinness? Do you remember? Yeah. Ruby red. Ruby red, Ruby exactly. red. Yeah, yeah. So 10% of our barley is roasted barley, 10% is natural barley, and 80% of our barley would be malted barley. So a typical lager set is 100% malt, or again it's to be 80% malt. Wow. Uh, we roast our barley at 232 degrees Celsius. Oh. Okay, we roast it for two and a half hours, reaches that temperature for the last 20 minutes. And then we dump it in cold water, stop it from cooking. Okay, any higher will catch on fire, any lower it wouldn't develop the right flavor on our beer. So it has to be at that temperature for 12. 20 minutes, but all together two and a half hours. About a half an hour's drive from here, 30 minutes drive. And his father, Richard, worked for the Archbishop. And when the Archbishop died, he left Arthur 100 pounds, and that's how Arthur began brewing. Originally, he wasn't here, it was a place called Leakslip, which is about 10 minutes from his hometown. He came here, he signed that lease in 1759, but two years later, he married his wife, Olivia, and did 21 children. 21. He was prolific. <laughs> I think that has to do a lot with the legend as well. Possibly. <laughs> Possibly. From those, from those 21, only 10 survived. Okay? Which was typical of the time. And the eldest was a guy called Arthur II. And he got the brewery along with Brother Benjamin. And they began to export our beer over the world. So we've been exporting to the Caribbean since 1801. We've been exporting to Africa since 1842. 
been exporting to the US since 1817. Okay. And some of those countries that we first began to export to back then have become our biggest markets today. Yeah. So per capita, Jamaica drinks the most Magnus in the world. So yeah, two and a half million people or three and a half million people live in Jamaica. It's not, not a huge market, you know, in terms of population, but in terms of per person, it's our biggest market in the world. We take all our barley, we crush it, okay, we soak it in warm water, about 64 degrees Celsius for about 40 minutes. And after 40 minutes here, we put it through what we call a keeve. So pretty much a, a big fancy sieve and it removes all the solids. Leaves us with water, high in sugar and starch, we call it wort, W-O-R-T. It's the same word in whiskey as well, as far as I know, in wine. And we take that wort, we send that just here to the kettle, and that's where we're going to go next, okay? All the barley that's over here, though, we'll sell that to farmers for our you know, livestock with, because there's no use to us anymore, okay? We send it here to this kettle and we boil it for, for one hour and during the boiling we add our hops and after an hour of boiling we allow it to cool to about 18 degrees Celsius and then we add in our yeast. And that's what used to happen here. What used to happen here, something similar to what you see in this screen, it's going to start back up in a second. And when it does, the, sea, the sugar floating around, we'll throw in the yeast and you want to see the yeast zoom around. It eats the sugar, it produces alcohol, carbon dioxide, but it also flavours our beer. And after only 64 hours here, we have what's known as a green beer. We send our green beer right over here to this maturation vat. Now today it's all stainless steel, but right up until 1955 it's all American white oak. Mostly came from the east coast of the US. And again it's in there for six days. And after six days there, we bottle it, can it, keg it. And it's time for drinking. Are you thirsty guys? Yes. Okay, go. Cool. Yes. <laughs> so don't know what time it is. Uh, master brewer is an expert uh, yeah. board to taste the Guinness FES that is produced in each one of the country and we have the qualification and the qualifications of the, not, not the quality, but actually the taste profile of each one. How does one apply for that job? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm You have to I'm really next. be an expert. Uh, uh, yeah. Say you see, you know, I'm done, but I was good. Yeah, yeah, I hope that's let me read it. Okay. 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 Go for it. Slancha. Slancha. Deep breath. Good mouthful. Swallow, breathe out through your nose. Keep your mouth closed until you breathe out through your nose. And we get that smooth, smooth, creamy texture to our beer. And that's all down to the nitrogen gas. So most beers would be carbonated, like for Guinness for an extra stout, where Guinness would add nitrogen to. And so it forms the head and top of your Guinness. That's why there are 30 million bubbles in every single pint. What you have there is one eighth of a pint. So there's more than three and a half million bubbles in that sample. And as those bubbles land, you're throwing the back, you're throwing through that smooth, creamy, velvety texture for it. Do you like it? Yeah, man, it's smooth. You look like you need another one. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> so we just saw the proper way of tasting a Guinness. Mouthful at a time, keep your mouth closed, uh, take it in and breathe through your nose, and that way you get the full experience and the flavors of the beer. So as you notice, we are going up and up and up until we get to the top of the pint. We have what we call the Taste More session here. So we give out a free sample of Guinness to all of our visitors who are in the room at the time. Um, some goes to the stage and explain the flavors behind the beer. They walk off stage and what happens is, uh, you guys ever hear river dance? Yeah. So a little bit like river dance, like a, a mini river dance. It's a flash mob river dance. So if you want to come down here for one o'clock, you're more than welcome. That's when the next one's going to be. And you get some free beer as well. So. Every hour on the hour between now and six o'clock. So there's no reason to leave here until six o'clock today. All right. Look up here. You'll see an ostrich. Okay. His body's on the next level. He has his head in the sand, so to speak, and he's a pint glass up in his throat. The next level is advertising for us. You'll see his body and the rest of the animals on the next level. Many people said because Guinness made them feel good. So our first slogan was, Guinness is good for you. Our second ever slogan was, my goodness, my Guinness. Our third ever slogan was, Guinness for strength. Right up until November 2009, if you donate blood in Ireland, you receive a free glass of Guinness. And that helped promote the whole idea of Guinness being good for you. And as a result, a lot of people would think Guinness is good for you. 
Yep. Now what I can say to you today is it's not. I I, I, I wish it was, but it, it's not. Um, a lot of people think it's very high in iron when in fact there's not an awful lot of iron in Guinness. What Guinness does have is a lot of vitamin B12 and that helps absorption of iron into your blood. But there are, yeah, exactly, and there, there are far healthier ways of getting B12 into your diet than drinking Guinness. Now perhaps not as enjoyable way, but certainly healthier ways. We first started advertising six years after we first started advertising. These animals first started to appear and they were created by a man called John Gilroy. He was at the circus one day. He saw he seen a sea lion with a ball in his nose and that's how he got his idea. And then after that he created the, the ostrich, and also the toucan. And he's the most famous of all these animals. First advertisement So we're making way from level four to level five. On level five here, we have three different restaurants. And we've also a bar here. Slice it! Woo!